We always talk about reality TV, right? We, me, this is what I'm doing in the moment, running down the last couple pieces of clothing from my young daughter. Oh, it's too late to add it to the wash. Damn it. I was so freaking close. So what's going on this morning? As I attach my tripod here, my youngest daughter just got off to preschool. So I, can you believe it? The bunker, the house is empty. I have a moment to make a video. And that's exactly what I'm gonna F and do this morning. Right now, in the moment, as always, trying to get a little light on it. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Don't know if I'm in it, but we're trying. Okay, Tuesday morning. Am I running 100 miles an hour? You freaking believe it. I've been up since 6 a.m. Got the first two kids off to school. Thumbs up on that. Uh, it's 8.30 right now. Got my uh, four-year-old off to school. So reality, what it be. And we're going to try to get a better shot. I'm going to sit down at this desk here and shoot something. Because <laughs> I'm moving 100 miles an hour. This is how I always move. My stepfather used to yell at me when I used to unload the van. And no, I'm not on anything either. It's just all freaking adrenaline. Okay. Nothing. <laughs> so, uh, my stepdad would always warn me, and I've spoken this in my past videos about taking care of yourself if you're a younger picker. And, uh, and that mentality, obviously, when you're a beast on that level, because I was there, I've lived it, I've been the beast. Uh, my stepfather would always, who was in his, at that time, gosh, that's about 2000. Uh, so 16 years back, I don't know, I'm in my late 30s, I guess, something like that. And uh, I'm 49 now. You do the math. I can't do any fucking math unless I sit down and, and shut my mouth, and that ain't going to happen. So uh, he would always tell me, slow down, slow down. And I always felt, I was told this story a million times that, fuck it, I'm leaving everything on the field. You know, I can't be stopped. I'm a beast, which I fucking was. And uh, I'd have a dresser on my shoulder, and uh, to my last days, I'll brag about this. you know. And uh, But here's the bragging where it ends. Can't music stops everything. You beat your body down. There is no getting away from it. At the time, I thought, shit, I don't, I don't want to leave nothing on the fucking table when I'm an old man. You know, I don't want to be sitting there going, God, I wish I would have worked harder. So fuck, I would just bust it. But the reality of it is, is you're looking for the long haul. Uh, and, and you know, that's how I look into my future right now. I'm in a different period of my life right now. I'm in my late 40s. We're rolling into our 50s. Uh, this is a whole new period. Exciting. We're going to continue making videos at least till 2018. And maybe at that point, I'll recommit to even doing more. Why not do these? The TV show didn't happen, but these videos are fun. I enjoy them. It's free. I don't have to answer to no one. Hello! Tuesday morning, I'm out of here. I'm heading over to St. Paul. I'm going on a bye. Uh, through a buddy, through Facebook, uh, he had posted a picture uh, of him having, uh, he was cleaning his garage, and in the background I seen an old Coca-Cola machine, and I touched base with him a, a year ago easily. I've continued to kind of poke at it, seeing if I could get it at a, re a reasonable price. It's a 1930s piece. Uh, it's got some patina, that's for sure. I'm giving him 250 for it. I'm going to get it right now. Uh, I feel good about it because I'm I'm buying it for personal use, and I believe that there's meat on the bones if I change my mind, which always tends to happen uh, in this field of collecting. Uh, whatever you want to categorize yourself as a dealer, a collector, whatever the case, you are still got to move shit. Uh, unless you just have a fucking massive farmhouse with a barn-sized sliding doors. <laughs> And boy, Jesus Christ, can you, t you see those guys on pickers and, uh, you know, I go through mental torment just thinking about my collection. It, uh, how, 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 how do you handle that? You've got to manage it. Open up a shop. Sell the riffraff. I mean, do something. Don't just hoard it like that. There's no fucking sense. Uh... Sell the low end shit at the very least, and you know, fine tune your collection. And that's my motivation there. Let's fucking say it. Let's spew it out. I do believe in upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. As you look at my pitiful broken globe and my dusty uh, lampshade that doesn't fit a lamp properly. <laughs> Talk about not being focused. What else is going on with me? Let's uh, be honest. Let's give some reality here, some real life. Well, we couldn't get the baby clothes in or my youngest daughter's clothes in and the washing machine. We missed that. Uh, got the Coke machine we're going to get. I am going to film that. 
And then um, there is one more thing I wanted to touch on, my Ford Transit. You know, I've had issues with the sliding doors on it. It's a 2014 Transit. I got a six-year deal on it, zero interest, uh, not a lease, but to own. And I'm a year and a half into it. I got it last April, brand new. I think it had 30 miles on it when I purchased it. And right off the get-go, I noticed I was having issues with these fucking sliding doors. Uh, from jamming to not sliding on a hill. So I contacted Ford early on, three to six months into the uh, the deal, and I was like, listen, you know, I don't fucking like these doors. They're jamming. There's a defect here. Uh, something's wrong. I want a new vehicle. They were basically, oh, no, just bring it in. We'll fix it. So I was like, fuck it. You know, I wanted to, I was hoping I could just bring it in and point this out. Of course, that's the reality of life. And little I know, that wasn't going to happen. And I accepted it and was like, I'll live with it. Well, I haven't had many issues over the past year. Every now and then I've had an issue. Sometimes it wouldn't shut. There was a time in St. Paul I had it loaded up from an estate and the fucking door wouldn't shut. I was shitting. I didn't even have a fucking bungee cord on me. I would have totally been fucked. Finally got the door shut. It literally felt like something was jamming. I'm looking up and down, there's a pin that goes into the door when it slides shut. Long story short, this is true. Last Friday, I went garage sailing with my youngest, four-year-old. On Fridays, uh, she doesn't have school. And we're out, and we go to a garage sale. And I load her back up in the car, and I shut the door. And it didn't sound right when it shut, but I look at the door, and I'm like, it, it's shut. You know, and I was like, well, fuck, I'll go in, you know, and the light will come on if the door is not shut. I pull out from the garage sale, doing about a mile an hour. All of a sudden, I hear, like, there's a bowling ball in the back. I look back to see that the door has slid open. I hit the brake. It comes fucking ripping back like a guillotine and shuts. Mind you, this is right next to my daughter's seat. Everything's fine. I'm like, fuck, I didn't shut the fucking door properly. It's my fault. Saturday, I get a recall letter from Transit saying that these doors are defective. <laughs> they fucking uh, will replace them in uh, mid-2017. I'm like, fuck that. So I'm going to go out to Ford dealership where I bought it, and I'm going to flip out, and I'm going to trade it in. I've got a year and a half of payments into this fucking thing, you know. I'm going to put it in for a 2016 pickup truck with normal doors, and we're just going to start afresh. You know, I'm going to get some kind of credit, obviously. You know, I'm even willing to make a loss. I'm hoping that they would do a buyback on some level. Oh, hell no. They start showing me the, the newer vehicles that I can't afford, $38,000, because I told them I wanted to keep my same payment to four sixty nine. That's what I pay on the transit a month. Talk about honesty, huh? And uh, I'm just like, you know, for a truck. And they're like, well, lease it, and then in three years do it. I'm like, fuck that. I want to buy the fucking truck. I want to own it when I'm done. I don't want to have to negotiate three years in, whatever the fuck. And uh, then they start showing me used trucks, and I uh, can't get those. There's going to be interest on it. So now I had to open a case with Ford, and fuck, i got to go the long haul. I'm going to go to go to battle with it. I'm, I want a buyback. And, uh, you know, a buyback is a serious situation. They give you all your money back and, and that. So, I, you know, re the reality is I know Ford probably does not want to do that. What I'm trying to do is pinch them into a position. I'm like, listen, my buyback is just fucking give me some kind of credit towards this new truck. Let me walk away with the same payment and a zero interest on it, and we'll just start afresh with a new vehicle. That's what I need. I can't drive this fucking vehicle. I got the two special needs kids. I got the four-year-old. Plus, you know, I haul antiques and collectibles at times. I can't have that fucking door opening up. I'll, have, I'll lose a kid. Uh, I'll lose an antique. I'll lose a fucking door. Or I could lose my life on the highway. I don't feel safe. You're not going to fix it fucking a uh, half year from now and then tell me, okay, now it's fixed. Fuck you. I've had bullshit with this thing since the start. It's a risk. This vehicle is mainly a family vehicle. Mind you, I've had it a year and a half. I've only put 8,000 fucking miles on it. Uh, so I'm pissed, and I'm also uh, energetic, and I'm positive, and I'm going to get a Coke machine. We're going to get that deal done with Ford. We're going to figure something fucking out. they got to do what's right, right? No, of course not. But you try, and you keep banging, and you keep fighting, and you keep going. Because I am telling you, that's what it takes sometimes. But remember, keep your cool. You know, I curse on here when I'm talking to you. But when you're talking with any type of situation where you're trying to get something done, and you're meeting with a don't be cursing, don't start the insults, you can intellectually uh, rip someone apart, definitely. You know, you can sit there and tell them, uh, and mind you, I'm a high school dropout, so mind my... Um, 
vocabulary is not the best. Any, any good speaking I've got just came from uh, living in the world and reading books growing up. Uh, not school taught, that's for sure. Uh, I'm a total uh, failure of the school system. Uh, mainly I will take responsibility for that as well. So I can't blame it all on them. But, uh, and I don't. <laughs> There's no fucking blame game here. I am who I am and that's what I am. Isn't that what Popeye said? Fuck, I love Popeye. You know, nobody knows who Popeye is anymore. They should still be running those black and white Popeye uh, cartoons. See what this is? This is improv. This is what I'm talking about. This is going with the flow. This is just fucking winning it. And speaking about things, I heard a comedian break it down. Speaking about things, 50 things, if you were going to go into the uh, field of stand-up, which uh, is no different than this. It's communicating with someone. 50 things. Here's a tip. And I loved it. Lisa Lampanelli was on Howard Stern yesterday, and she gave this tip. Initially, when she started out in her career, uh, she went and seen a, some type of teaching, acting, comedian, teacher. And he said, listen, it's real simple for, uh, for comedy. And it goes across the board. So this goes across the board. Get it? If you make videos on any level, this goes across the board. Quit repeating yourself, Michael. You're fucking showing your uh, mentality. Here it is. Here's the tip. For comedians... And for guys on video, obsessive, co uh, I can't stop. <laughs> uh, so what it is, is write down 50 things that you love and 50 things that you hate. It can't be something you like. Uh, it has to be love. There has to be passion there. And then fucking wing it. Stay pure to those two balances of what you really hate and what you really fucking love. Right? And who doesn't love getting out there, working hard, going home at the end of the fucking day? Right? Get out there. Get a job done today. Do something. Bust your fucking ass. Do it the hardest way. Because if you're going to do a job right, there is no fucking around it. You have to attack uh, at the hardest point. Because you conquer that first, then it's all downhill from there. Remember that. That, always, uh, I, that was something I did when I did estate cleanouts and any type of hard work from that point out is attack the worst part. You walk into an estate and you're like, fuck, all the antiques are on the main floor. They're littles. We can load these in the car right now. That's the easy part. We're going to run in and out of the car all day long and load these up. No, go down into the basement, clean out that pile of wood that's in the fucking uh, old coal room or whatever. Do the hardest work first because that way... You're, as you're coming down from your day, it's easier and easier. At the end of the day, you want to be carrying out the little antiques and putting them in the car. You don't want to do that first, and then you've got all the good, and then you're like, fuck, I still got to go clean that coal room out. Do the worst part first. And you know what? You'll probably clean that coal room out, and at the very bottom of that uh, pile of wood, there's going to be a pressed steel truck in mint condition in the box that's been down there since Christmas 19-fucking-32. Hey now! Metal Mike! I'm on the road. I've talked too long. As always, I gotta go get that fucking Coke machine.